Hi, I'm Jenna Bowles. I'm the pangolin keeper here at the Gladys Porter Zoo. Um, happy World Pangolin Day. Uh, most people, when I say the word pangolin, they think I'm saying penguin, like the flightless bird. Um, pangolins are actually mammals, and they are unique to other mammals because they are covered in scales. Uh, they have a super long, sticky tongue. It's like the length of their entire body. They have no teeth, and in the wild, they would be eating exclusively ants and termites. A lot of people have never heard of pangolins and the Gladys Porter Zoo along with the six other facilities in the United States that have pangolins, um, we are all called the Pangolin Consortium. Uh, we are hoping to help change that. So we have had uh, white-bellied pangolins here at the Gladys Porter Zoo since 2016. All species of pangolins, there are eight different species that live in Asia and Africa. All species are vulnerable, uh, endangered, or critically endangered at this point. And the reason being is because uh, there is a, a market for them. It's illegal, but there is a market for them in China and Vietnam mainly. Uh, their meat is considered a delicacy and their scales, even though they are made of keratin, the exact same thing as our fingernails, their scales are considered important in traditional medicine. They have been poached and trafficked to the point that most of the species are endangered or critically endangered at this point. Um, the reason why we have them here at the zoo is that uh, we are hoping to learn more about them and to study them and to um, gain a lot of knowledge that we can help share with other zoos that have them and also with people out in the field who are trying to protect pangolins. The pangolins that we have here are behind the scenes. It's pretty unlikely that they're ever going to go out on an exhibit. Only a couple of zoos out of the seven in the United States that have these pangolins have them out for the public to see. Um, the reason why we have them behind the scenes is because it allows us to, um, to study them, learn from them, observe them in a pretty quiet and contained environment. We're also able to keep the building warm and humid year round, which is similar to their African forest habitat. And really the main reason why we have pangolins is so that um, we can learn more about their physiology, specifically their reproductive physiology. Pangolins in the wild, they are solitary, they are nocturnal, so it's very hard for people to study them. And especially since they've been poached so badly, it's getting harder and harder to even find them to study them. So everything that we've learned here at the zoo, we are able to share with the other facilities that have pangolins, and we're also able to share that information with people out in the field who are trying to learn about pangolins and protect them. So this past fall, something historical and really exciting happened here at the Gladys Porter Zoo. Um, one of our female pangolins actually gave birth, and this is our first baby that we've had that was actually bred here at the zoo. It's really, really exciting. Um, he's doing really well. I feel incredibly privileged and grateful that I get to watch him grow and help him grow. Um, and we really hope that he continues to do well. And his birth is pretty much, it's, it's a beacon of hope amidst all of the news that we're constantly hearing about massive, massive confiscations of pangolin scales, pangolin meat that are trying to be trafficked into um, Vietnam, China, where the, where the market is essentially. And so his birth is really special and really, really exciting. His birth kind of represents kind of the, the culmination of the efforts that have been made by all the different facilities that are learning how to keep pangolins and how to care for them in the best way possible. One thing that you can do to help pangolins out in the wild is literally just spread the word about what they are, share cool facts about them with your friends. Considering so many people don't know what pangolins are and yet they are actually the most trafficked mammal in the world right now, um, they need a lot of help and just um, spreading the word about pangolins is the first step because if people don't know what they are, then how can they protect them?